right? So what I've been doing uh, these past few months has been teaching the six personal perspective classes, uh, which are the basic principles created by Gary Keller. And the last one, we've broken them up into series. The last one is accountability. So I feel like it's almost perfect timing considering that uh, a lot of us are now working from home clearly, doing everything virtually. And um, I know a lot of us have been staying at home and eating all of the food that we have purchased to help us survive uh, this quarantine. So we're going to talk a little bit about accountability and just being accountable versus being a victim. Because right now a lot of things are going to change and either you can, you know, take this as an opportunity to change the way you do business, become more focused and be build better habits, or you can take this as an opportunity to just kind of quit and throw your hands in the air. So we're going to review how to be accountable. We're going to review what to be accountable of, and we're going to review the tools that we can use to be accountable. And at the end of this Zoom class, I'm going to be doing a raffle. So there's going to be instructions on how to enter into that. And I'm going to be providing free coaching for 66 days. Now, some of you might be wondering why 66 days. Some of you might know exactly why, but based on the One Thing book, uh, 66 days is the amount of time that it's going to take to build a habit. And we might be quarantined for 66 days or more, so it's going to be the perfect time to build that habit. And I'm going to be there every day uh, keeping you accountable. And Laura can testify because she's not eating carbs, and I don't care if I'm a mile away. If I hear her opening a bag of chips, I will pop out of nowhere. So do not enter into this raffle if you do not feel that uh, you can handle uh, that much pressure and that much accountability. But let's dive in. We're going to go right into the personal perspectives class. So I'm going to share my screen with all of you. Uh, you'll hear my voice, but we're going to watch the screen. Just give me one second to do this. So uh, can you guys see this? Can someone uh, cue, cue me in on this? Someone unmute themselves? Laura, can you see the presentation? We can see it. Okay, good. All right. So again, we are continuing with the six personal perspectives. Before we start, um, I know that there is a lot going on. We don't know what's going to happen to the market. Uh, Things are going to be done a little bit differently. A lot of people are scared. Uh, the sellers are scared. The buyers are scared. And I'm sure realtors are scared as well. So before we even dive in, I just want us all to take a deep breath. Just here, I'll do my, here, let me go back to my face. Hmm. So we can do this as a collective. All right. Let's just take a second to take a deep breath, just all the way in. And then all the way out because I have anxiety right now. So I'm sure a lot of you do as well with all the chaos, all the news, everything that's going on right now, all the rumors, just a lot of people putting fear out there without having actual, no one's going to predict the future. But the only thing we can do or the only thing we can control is how we react to everything. So you can either panic and collapse or you can take this as an opportunity to learn something new to build better habits and to have a strong mindset so that's really what i want to focus on in this class so let's go back to the presentation i just want to take that deep breath that was more for me than for you. all right let's get back to this so the book shift uh, from Gary Keller is pretty much everything that's being talked about right now. And I read the first few pages um, just to kind of get an idea of what mindset we should be entering uh, 
through this shift. And this shift's a little bit different because it is uh, surrounding a health scare. So there are some other elements that we're going to have to learn to adapt. But for the most part, we're technically in a crisis right now. And this is how they define a crisis in the book shift. So circumstances requiring an immediate shift in strategy. So whether we are now doing virtual classes, virtual showings, virtual listing appointments, electronically signing documents. I mean, this is stuff that we technically have done in the past. We use DocuSign to sign listing agreements. I've personally done virtual showings for out of town clients. So it's just gonna be the new norm. So we just need a shift in our strategy, a shift in how we're gonna market and how we're gonna prospect. And that's really all that this is. And we're gonna discuss, you know, what it is that differentiates those who achieve at the highest level and those who don't seem to accomplish much. And when we're entering into a shift, it's going to be that more intense. You're going to have to do more amount of work than you did to achieve the same level of results and maybe even less. And that's something that we have to understand going in. And Gary Keller actually said this on Monday. He said, for a lot of us, we were expecting this to be our best year yet. And he said, it might not. And that's okay, um, but you just have to make sure that you're still putting in the work, even if you're only accomplishing, you know, the same as you did last year. But that's what's to be expected. So what differentiates those who achieve and those who don't accomplish much, especially right now, is going to be our mindset, our attitude towards everything, and our approach to life. So if you're not going to be in the right mindset thinking that you can overcome this, if your attitude is going to be negative or sour about what's going on, and if your approach to everything um, is going to be more reactionary versus being proactive, um, you're not going to get out of this shift having market share. And that's really the opportunity is once you have market share in a shift, it just expands as the market gets better. What I'm gonna do with all of you really quickly, um, if you haven't attended the previous six personal perspective classes, I'm just gonna review all of the steps um, and they're just as relevant now as they were back then. Uh, the first is commit to self mastery. So, we're going to have a lot of downtime these next few weeks. So this is the perfect opportunity to focus on any skills. So sales skills, to do a lot of role play um, over the phone. That's the perfect activity to do right now. Mastering any marketing, Facebook ad campaigns. We're going to self master all of these skills pretty much because we have no other choice because we're going to be sitting at home. Now, you're going to commit to the 80-20 principle. Uh, now is the time to focus and double down on what's most important. For most of us as realtors, that is going to be lead generation. And Gene Rivers even said, you know, not Gene Rivers, uh, Gary Keller uh, said that pretty much you need to commit four hours. And that's going to be your 20%. Everything else um, is really irrelevant at this point. Uh, the most important thing right now is talking to people, checking in, making sure they're okay. And even if they're not ready right now, once all of this dies down, once all of the chaos, you know, um, you know, settles, people are going to remember you and you're going to be the first person that they think about once they are ready. So that's really what we need to focus on right now. And those are our big rocks. Our big rocks, the thing we need to focus on the most is lead generation. Now moving from E to P, being entrepreneurial to being purposeful. So before we can just go out, run around, show people homes. Um, we can't do that anymore because most people don't want to see homes anymore. Most people don't want to go out in public. So we're going to have to be a little bit more purposeful. And that's where, you know, now you have to think about how am I going to do things virtually? How am I going to, you know, put out these different ad campaigns to get more leads because we're going to need to talk to even more people, double or triple the amount of people to get the same amount of business as before. So we can't just rely on being entrepreneurial. We're in a different uh, state of affairs right now. We need to be purposeful with how we do things. Being learning based. Um, 
this is the perfect time to learn right now because most of us are stuck at home. And now with everything changing, I mean, Keller Williams has drastically uh, created all of this content for us to learn. There is a Facebook group um, called Shift. I can try and see if I can share the link, um, but pretty much every day they have some sort of virtual class based on the book Shift. So now is the perfect time to be learning based, brush up on skills. So that way when all of this settles, you're gonna be even better than what you were before this. Removing limiting beliefs. Now this is gonna be a big one because I understand that there's a lot of fear you know, just from the media, um, you know, from your circle, everyone is terrified right now. And a lot of people are concerned with what's going on in the market. People asking me all the time, you know, how is this affecting you? And if you allow all of that negativity to come in, um, you know, it could prevent you from moving forward. And they say all the time, a lot of pro top producers did their best during shift markets. So, if you go in with that mindset, then you're going to be successful. But if you're already thinking about leaving the business and, you know, everything's going to be tough and nobody wants to buy, nobody wants to sell, um, you know, you're not going to really come out of this uh, virus alive, even if you don't have it. Uh, but the last thing we're going to be talking about today is being accountable. So you can know all of these other steps, but if you're not accountable to yourself, or if you don't have someone who holds you accountable, none of these other things are going to matter. If no one's holding you accountable on mastering a new sales skill, if no one's holding you accountable on lead generating, if no one's holding you accountable on being more purposeful and implementing new systems, if no one's holding you accountable on teaching or viewing classes, like myself, I pretty much tagged everyone, sent out emails, Facebook, Instagram, you know, I'm that person being accountable for everyone, making sure they're being learning based. And if you don't have someone to talk to about what's going on right now, you know, any limiting beliefs or fears you have, you're not going to really get that far. And that's what the purpose of today's class is. We're going to talk about being accountable and who can hold you accountable. Now, this is something before we dive into the class fully. Uh, this was in the book Shift. Uh, in the forward. The measure of your success in life is in direct proportion to what you're willing to do when you don't want to do it. And this is pretty much the perfect time because right now is a time where we're going to have to work even harder uh, to get the same results. And if you're not willing to do it at this time, you know, if you're working from home and you rather eat your snacks uh, than do Facebook market campaigns, then, you know, you're going to not have the best results once this shift is over. So be accountable. I first want to talk about what we need to be accountable of. So the most important thing in a shift is we need to keep track of our numbers. And like I've said multiple times already, just within, you know, the first 15 minutes of this class is you're going to have to do either the same amount of work or more work to get the same results or maybe even less results. And so all of our numbers, if you've ever tracked your numbers before, if you've ever done the uh, economic model before, trying to figure out, you know, how many people do you need to talk to before you have an appointment, before you have an agreement, um, all those numbers are pretty much going to double or triple at this point. So whatever numbers you were basing off before, if you were, your goal was to do two appointments a week, you might have to do four appointments a week. You know, if your goal was to talk to 10 people a day, you know, it's going to be 20 people a day now. So what we really need to be accountable of right now is our numbers. You know, another thing we can be accountable of is the amount of leads we're getting. And luckily, right now, command and with the Facebook uh, campaigns that they're doing. Now is the perfect opportunity and we have the tools needed to generate all those leads that we're going to need. So we're going to need a lot of leads and you're going to need to talk to a lot of people and get through all of them just to get that one appointment uh, that will lead into a listing or a buyer then into, you know, a closed transaction. And one thing that Gary Keller said on Monday during his um, speech was, you need to cut expenses. So as you can see on this chart, the last thing, profit, um, 
you're going to have to cut a lot of your expenses to be profitable uh, because we are going to have potentially less sales. And a lot of our expenses, whether it's, um, you know, marketing or Vulcan or another CRM that we might be using, those are costs that we're going to have regardless of whether we have sales or not. And so we are expecting to be less sales. So we're going to need to cut our expenses so that we can still make a profit. And that's another thing that we need to be focusing on and be accountable for. So we need to be accountable on the amount of leads we're bringing in the amount of people we're talking to, the amount of appointments we're going on, and our expenses and our budget so we can still be profitable during this time. Now, one activity that I want us to do right now, uh, like I said, take out your pen and paper if you want to do it on the computer. You know, there's a lot going on right now. And you, I know all of us have fears. I have fears. I'm not going to lie. I was like, should I get another job? What is going to happen? Um, so I want us to take now about two minutes to think of an issue or problem that you think you're going to struggle with because of the shift that we're going through right now. Um, so I want you to write that down and then I want you to, you know, just lay it all out. Just pretty much vent on a piece of paper what issue you have right now, how you think this shift is going to affect you. All right, so we're going to take a second to do that. I see some people. Hmm. I'm reading the comments. No, Laura, your office is not bugged. I just know these things. I know what you're eating, when you're eating it. I just know. <laughs> Russians are notorious, I guess, for bugging places. That is true. That is how I know everything. And when you have me as your accountability coach, I will know everything that you are doing. And it's because I'm Russian. So that's why. Hmm. All right. Anyone who's joining in right now, we are taking a second to write down an issue or problem you are struggling with right now or something you think you're going to struggle with because of this new shift that we're entering. Okay, so if I want someone to share. Hello? Hello? Yes. Okay, uh, mine, yeah, I don't, I don't know how to work this, so I'm That's like. Okay. Um, you share my, what issue um, you think you're going to struggle with because of the shift? Yes, uh, marketing. Okay. What about marketing? Um, well, uh, to put out marketing, um, whether it be postcards or door knocking, all these things that I did before, mm -hmm. and now I'm not going to do it so much now. Yeah. Door knocking, I can definitely understand being an issue. People are probably going to freak out if someone shows up to their house. Um, but I have seen on some different Facebook groups, people door knocking, but with care packages. So they might have hand sanitizer, Lysol wipes, different things like that. If you can even get your hands on any of that stuff right now. But if you can, and you come to someone's house and present that, I definitely think that would leave a lasting impression. In terms of postcards, I think you should, I mean, I don't think, 
um, the delivery and mailing industry right now is pretty much thriving because uh, that's the only way we can get things done. So I think that um, the postcards should still be fine in terms of marketing. And like I mentioned before, we have the command Facebook ads. Uh, I know Mike Lane, he's here watching with us now. Um, I'm sure they're going to be doing some, and Morgan, they're going to be doing some more classes throughout the next few weeks on how to do different paid Facebook ad campaigns um, to really help you, you know, prospect and get some more leads. Okay. Do you think, is that, is that helpful? Does that make you feel a little bit better? Uh, yes, and uh, Mike Lane and um, Morgan have set up the Facebook and the Instagram for me. There you go. Aren't they angels? They are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is there, can anyone else share with me right now an issue or problem you think you're going to struggle with with this shift that's coming up? Someone can just unmute themselves. All right. Can you hear me now? All right. Yep. Angel. Okay. So I have a handful of clients, but only one is active. I can get my other clients to engage, they're not responding, I'm afraid they're, they're afraid of uh, COVID-19. Uh, I don't know how to make them not be afraid of, with all the news that are constantly being bombarded in the media. So what do you think they're afraid of? Do you think they're afraid of catching the virus or they're afraid of what's going to happen to the market? I think both. They're probably afraid of uh, the, the, the virus, the market, their employment, yeah, employment. the world, they're, so, they're, they're just being overloaded with all this negative news. It's constant, 24-7. Yeah. Almost feel like, listen, just stop watching the news for, for an hour. Yeah. yeah get a, a bit of a respite from that. Mm-hmm. Angel. Yo. Somebody. I'm, I'm sorry, Liz. Go ahead. Go ahead, Liz. I was just going to say the employment one is definitely – a big concern. Um, Laura on our team, she had a recent buyer, uh, literally 2019, uh, who just purchased a home, was going to be putting it on the market uh, because they're concerned they're in their teacher. You know, a lot of schools are closed right now, so they're thinking about putting their home on the market. So people that are weary of their jobs might need to sell, and that's where we come in and help them with that. Uh, for people who are looking to purchase, you know, people need to live somewhere regardless. So this might be a good time to get into the rental market because uh, if someone can't purchase, they still need somewhere to stay. Um, I don't know. I've heard rumors that they might freeze certain uh, mortgages. I'm not too sure how true that is. That's something we should research and try to figure out as well. Um, but definitely depending on the industry and what your client is working in, I understand they have some concerns. And it's not our job to force people to do something that they don't want to do. So if someone is in a certain industry where, you know, they could potentially be affected, then, you know, now might not be the best time. But there are other industries right now that are probably still going to thrive. Anyone who's in tech people who do website design. I mean, everything's virtual right now. So those people are pretty much going to be safe for now. So, you know, some people, unfortunately, it's not going to be the time for them, but there are still going to be people who are purchasing. And in Gary's, Gary Keller's conference on Monday, he actually said that uh, when the market crashed in 2008, the same amount of homes were sold as last year, 2019. So it was still a crash, but yet the same amount of homes still sold last year. And last year was considered a good market. So people are still going to be buying and selling. Our job right now is to find those people. Right now you might be working with some who unfortunately are going to put their plans on hold and there's nothing we can do about that. Our goal right now is to talk to even more people and see who we can help. There are some people who need to sell their homes in unfortunate situations. And we're going to be those people to help them through that. And there's some people who, investors, interest rates are low right now. So, you know, maybe we should be targeting investors and helping them purchase these properties um, and building their pipeline and their wealth. So we're going to, you know, like the very first slide, crisis, 
circumstances requiring an immediate shift in strategy. So we're going to have to do things a little bit differently. Matthew. John, you were going to say something? Well, no, what I, was gonna, I was just going to piggyback off of, um, I mean, just offer some advice to Angel as far as what has worked for me yesterday. Um, I think that the first thing I did was reach out and ask if I could, if they could dedicate some time to a virtual call. And a lot of people were responsive to that. And I think what that did was kind of give me the ability to, to talk them off the ledge and kind of reassure them a little bit more, reestablish the rapport. But where we started the conversation was what exactly they're fearful of. And we talked about it in each, with each one. So when they addressed the idea of walking into a house that was maybe contaminated, I gave them several different options of how we can circumvent that. And when we did get to the point, because some points we did get to where they talked about their employment, then that's, a, that's a, unfortunately an obstacle that we can't overcome. We can tell them that we're still going to be of service to them and be here for them if and when they feel more comfortable in their, in their working position. But I think that a lot of the, the consultations that I had yesterday via Zoom really put a lot of peop more people at ease. Um, I think the more we know about how the contamination works and what we can do to prevent it, the better that we can service them. And even offering things where we're actually in the house ourselves and doing FaceTime tours or whatever it is that, that can keep them out and keep, keep them safe. But, you know, they still want to take advantage of the rates that are going on right now. And some of them, unfortunately, are in situations where their leases are expiring and they have to move. So all we can do is just put them a little bit more at ease. And, and I think that that's the best way is to just address each problem one at a time and just kind of build, reestablish that rapport with them and, and talk them off the ledge. That's good. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. All right. So thank you guys for participating in that little activity. I'm going to share my screen again, and we're going to continue with the presentation. Yeah, you know, I just wanted to say something. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. yeah. Sure. yeah. That's right. All right. Um, I just want to, because right now I have two clients and, you know, we just, we just submitted an offer in, uh, over the weekend, actually, well, before the weekend. And the thing about it is, uh, you know, just got, just got a, uh, a, a counter offer. And of course I have to redo all of that stuff. But the thing was this, the concerns were being that she's the buyer you know, we're going into many different kind of homes. Uh, and and the way that the climate is right now, of course, the issue of cleanliness and whether or not the home is contaminated, things of that particular nature. You know, I had to speak to her about that and 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 assure her that there that there are ways of, you know, if this particular offer does not go through, that there are ways for us to continue to move on because um, we've seen many homes that have been newly renovated that, that are not lived in. And, and in my search, I've seen a ton of fresh renovations coming onto the market uh, within the past five, six weeks. So literally, you know, yes, the homes are out there um, to be bought, but for those that, that may feel, um, you know, endangered because of the virus, you know, these, these particular homes that are renovated, they're in brand new condition, not lived in, no, no one has been in there. And, and literally, you know, to put that out there as an option, um, that's, a, that's a very, very good way to continue the momentum in terms of, you know, with your buyers to find a place to, uh, to put an offer in and, and to move forward because there's so much stuff that we can do virtually and, and online. Um, I understand that folks 
folks want to see the space in person because they want to try to visualize and you know know what kind of storage they're getting what, what what kind of amenities is in the home things of that particular nature i understand all of that um but you know they also understand that if the home isn't lived in or if everything is brand new in it the probability of them uh, getting sick behind that goes goes way down as opposed to going through a home that that is lived in that the seller still lives there the family still lives there you know so many different variables is um part of that so um that's one of the uh, shift in strategy is where we might even just be focusing on brand new construction homes and like i mentioned before um you know, targeting investors right now, helping them purchase properties, maybe that they can fix up and then put, you know, those brand new construction homes. And that would be a good conversation to have with those investors. You know, if you put a brand new home on the market where no one has been through it, uh, people are going to be more attracted to it. And maybe we might start marketing, you know, Corona free uh, virus homes, you know, brand new construction. So we're going to have to get a little bit uh, creative with everything that's going on. Um, I'm going to share my screen again. I'm going to continue on with this. Okay. So we're entering into a shift. So are you going to be a victim or are you going to be accountable? Because things are different. We're working from home. It's a different environment. Uh, people are scared and we need to first adjust our mindset. Uh, that way we can help change, you know, the people, the clients and the customers and their mindset. Now, we're just going to talk a little bit about the difference between someone who is a victim and someone who is accountable. So if someone who's a victim, they're going to, you know, they're not going to seek reality. They're not going to ask questions. They're not going to try to find out what's going on, you know, there's a lot of misinformation out there. So, you know, if you're not going to ask questions or, you know, dig deeper into what is being put out there, um, you know, you're just going to fall victim versus someone who's accountable. Like, for example, you know, they had the news where they dropped the, the Fed dropped the interest rate um, and everyone was confused. Uh, what did that truly mean? Does that mean you're going to have a zero percent uh, interest rate on your mortgage? But that's not what the case was. But there were some people who were trying to advertise that on Facebook. So someone who's accountable does you know, a little bit more research. Uh, someone who's a victim, they're going to fight reality. So they're either going to say, you know, we're not a shift. Uh, nothing's going to change. Everything's going to be fine. Um, where someone who is accountable, you know, they're acknowledging what's going on and the severity of how people feel. You know, it's uh, regardless of what you feel, we have to uh, be respectful of what our clients may feel, what customers may feel, and be sensitive to that um, and kind of acknowledge their feelings and help guide them through this process. Uh, someone who is a victim, they're going to put blame on everything. They're, they might even put blame on this whole virus. Well, my business is going to go down because of this virus. Um, we're not going to be successful because of this virus. The economy um, is bad. Nobody's going to buy anything. Nobody's going to sell anything. And, you know, that's a lot of, I'm hearing that a lot through our own market center, through Facebook, through all the different groups. And again, it's been proven time and time that anytime there is a shift, there are many people who are successful and those people who are successful stay successful uh, when the market turns back around. So even though things are unpredictable right now, this is going to pass. We're not going to be living in this forever. So someone who's accountable is going to own this. So they're going to shift their energy and their focus. They're not going to, you know, go into panic mode and collapse and allow this to prevent them from doing the work that needs to be done. They're going to shift. They're going to focus on putting in better systems, focus on different strategies, whether it's doing things virtually, um, and focus on doing more phone calls, because that's really what it's going to take um, in this shift to get the amount of business that we need. Um, 
the victim is also going to be making, you know, their own personal excuses, which is understandable going through, um, you know, with everything that's happening, there's a lot of negativity out there. Um, but we really need to be accountable. And instead of worrying about everything that's going on is to find solutions. So like, for example, people who are concerned about the virus and spreading it and entering into homes, our solution is going to be, well, we're just going to have to do things virtually now. So someone who's going to be accountable, that's what they're going to be doing. Someone who's a victim is just going to wait. Uh, they might just resign. They might say, you know what, let's just get out of real estate uh, for the next few months, do something else on the side. Um, but all the true work is going to happen now. All those phone calls, uh, checking in on people, making sure they're okay. Doing all that work now is going to get you the results when all of this settles. You know, waiting for the whole virus and, you know, all the hysteria to die down, um, they're going to be forgotten. Uh, but the people who are reaching out and sharing and, you know, staying on top of mind, those are the people who are going to be success successful when all of this dies down. So we just got to keep moving. We just got to keep pushing, um, keep making the phone calls. You know, our job right now is to find new business. I know Angel mentioned, you know, some of the people he's working with are concerned. There are certain things that are out of control, you know, people's uh, income and their current job situations. Um, but we just have to find the people who still need our help because people are still going to buy in this time, and especially with interest rates. There are people, this is the best time to buy. And like I said before, our new strategy might be working with uh, investors and helping them flip homes. Because by the time they buy those properties and they flip them, everything might die down. And now we're going to have probably a lot of more inventory, more inventory of homes for people to purchase once all of this settles. So that's going to be the difference between, you know, someone who's going to be a victim and someone who's going to be accountable. And this is something that I also read in the book Shift. Um, everyone won't succeed in a shift. As much as I would like for all of us to succeed, um, it's just not going to happen. People are going to leave this business. Um, but what we have to understand is some people will be successful. And more importantly, anyone can. So some of us are going to leave. I don't know who. Um, but the people who stay, we have every right and we have the ability to be successful in this shift. And that's the mindset that we need to go into this. You know, it's scary. Things are going to be different and we're going to work harder. But just know that anyone can be successful in this shift. And the people who won't be, unfortunately, you know, whether it's mindset or anything else, maybe it's the effort that they're putting in. Um, but just know that you can be that person who is successful in a shifted market. Now, I want to revisit the activity that we just did earlier, so where we wrote down an issue or a problem that we think we're going to struggle with, uh, with this shift that we are entering. So now I want us to kind of flip it around. We kind of did that a little bit together as a group, but I want us to write it down. So we're going to do the be accountable steps. So let me go to that next slide. So whatever you had uh, written down previously, uh, go through these steps. Uh, you know, I had explained the difference between a victim versus someone who is accountable. So someone who's accountable, they seek reality, they acknowledge reality, they own it, they find solutions, and they get on with it. So take a second to kind of follow this screen right now. So what was your issue? Okay. How does the awareness of the issue lead to the resolution? Okay, how does having clarity about the issue lead to the resolution? How are you going to use energy and focus to resolve the issue? And then I want us to write down what possible solutions we have and what action steps you're going to take. So we kind of talked about that a little bit, what possible solutions. So either doing Zoom calls with our clients, talking to them, doing virtual showings for people, if you have listings on the market, you know, putting out little, you know, sanitation uh, stations for people entering into the property, looking for maybe investors, um, you know, to focus on, you know, if you're concerned about marketing, doing paid fa Facebook campaigns. So I want us all to take a few minutes to write down what action tapes you're going to do 
uh, with whatever concern you have about this shift. So I'm gonna give you guys about two minutes. You're gonna write down what action steps you can take to achieve the solutions and solve the issue that you think you're gonna have from this shift. Oh, it's Deborah. All right. If anyone has just joined us, we did an activity earlier where we wrote down of an issue that we think we're going to face with this shifted market. And right now we're going to be writing down the action steps we're going to take to get past this. I see Angel furiously writing down his action steps. What are you saying, Mike? You're on, uh, are you singing to me? <laughs> okay. Okay, so if someone can please unmute themselves and share what action steps they're going to take uh, to overcome the issue that they think they're going to face because of the um, because of the shifted market. Sure. sure. Go ahead, Mike. So, so with a lot of realtors having trouble with social media and stuff like that. I feel like the problem is not just, I have a crazy echo, by the way. That's fine, keep going. Okay, so the problem is that they don't provide value. And I figure the reason why they don't provide value is because they're not willing to educate for free. And that's the biggest step I think more realtors need to take is educating not just your buyers, your clients, but other realtors as well, or just anybody in the real estate field. Um, we know a lot more than what we share. And the fact that we're not willing to share it enough is a problem. So for me personally, it's just to continue to educate for free and everything else will come with it. I mean, when you educate people, they're going to trust you. And when they trust you, they'll stay loyal. So that those three steps are like big things going on. And I mean, it's just it's so simple. Just share what you know. Yeah. We do it all the time to our clients. Well, not, not all, but we should be doing it all the time to our clients, but when you continue to do it, it shows. Yeah. And that's and what now, separates most agents from others. Yeah. And now's the best time to do it, especially with, uh, you know, everyone's using Zoom right now. Everyone's doing things virtually. You can do Facebook Live, Facebook Stories, Instagram Stories. I mean, this is a great way to connect with people. And if we're home anyway, and, and everyone else is home, 
you know, this is a good way to connect and reach out. So Mike, what is your action plan? You're going to provide more information. Yep. All right. How are you going to do that? Well, for one, we, I mean, I'm going to continue to teach with Morgan, Jerome, mm -hmm. whoever, um, try to hold more masterminds. I like, for instance, John Rios held a buyer consultation mastermind that had so many gems in it, yet it was, what, four of us? Mm -hmm. And that alone just tells me not enough people are aware of what we have to offer or we need to make sure that we get it out to people. Yeah. I mean, it's a mixture of both, but watching new agents, like I think that's my biggest thing too, is the new agents, making sure that they have some form of foundation moving forward. Mm -hmm. And by educating them, hopefully they stay in the business past, what, two years is the, the number that they give most? Yeah, two or three, I think. Nice. John, I see you joined us with your, with your presence, with your face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, what Mike just said is so true. And, um, you know, I compiled that buyer's consultation over the past four years, you know, every transaction that I had that went wrong on the buyer side, or there was something that happened that I didn't experience before, I went back and I added it to my consultation. And that's why my consultation is as long as it is, but it's very thorough. And, um, you know, when I did do a mastermind in the office, only like, it was only like, like four or five people, like Mike said, but I've been asked to do it at three other offices for, for three different companies. And they've had a bigger turnout than we've had in our own office. So um, I think that's one big thing. And for me, as far as what we can implement, um, Christine Ritchie did a class about, I want to say maybe a few months back. I don't know exactly when, but it was called... Um, the three C's cementing relationships or something to that effect. And, and I think that for a person like me, where 95% of my business comes from my database and my sphere of influence, I don't think that you can ever stop enhancing those relationships. I think that during this time, you've got to capitalize even more on those relationships and go a step further. If you're, form of lead gen to your sphere of influence was typically a phone call and it was a 10, 15 minute phone call and you were off, you know, now it might have to be a zoom call and, and you might have to have some deeper conversations about things that don't pertain to real estate at all. People are going through massive things right now and they want somebody to listen to them. And if you notice to piggyback off of what Mike said as well, a few months back, I decided to change the complete, I wanted to completely change the direction of my social media and anything that I put out is education based. None of it is just sold, just listed in contract. And I'm not knocking anyone for that does that. I, I mean, it, it's a mental imprint regardless. But what I've noticed is that if you, if your Instagram account is set up as a business, then you can view the insights on your post and the amount of engagement and the reach that my posts have gotten now when I'm educating as opposed to putting out things that don't really have much value is extremely drastic. So for me, it's, it's a matter of creating more valuable content to keep people engaged, to keep them knowledgeable and continue to further my relationships with them. Yeah, no, this is, as we were saying before, you know, in this shift, there's going to be an immediate shift in our strategies. And part of that is just reaching out to people, connecting with them. I mean, a lot of people want to be connected right now. Everyone's home, they're bored and they're lonely. Um, if you've taken bold before, um, you know, that activity they make us do where you call your sphere of influence and uh, ask for, you know, referrals you know, the chant that you do or the affirmation that we do before we call those people is, you know, 
they're happy and they're home and they want to give us business. It's the same thing. They literally are home right now and they're going to be happy to hear you because everyone's been quarantined and whether or not they have anyone to give to you, they're going to remember you because you were the person that had reached out. So these are some good action steps for us to take, uh, you know, in this new shifted market, the strategies that we're going to have to change right now. All right, so I'm going to go back to attention. Thank you everyone for sharing. Okay, so we just did this activity. Now, being accountable, it's a tricky thing because uh, most of us are not good at holding ourselves accountable. Um, it requires a lot of discipline to be accountable and especially, you know, the new market that we're going into. It's like I said before, you're going to have to do double or triple the amount of work to get the same results you have in the past. And there's other things that we need to be accountable for as well. Um, you know, as I mentioned before, you know, what Gary Keller had said, you know, you're going to have to change your budget and your expenses. Uh, so this, you know, what you see on the screen, this is an example of Mo Anderson and the people who hold her accountable. And I'm sure you guys have heard this phrase before. Um, you are the sum of the five closest people you spend time with. And so especially now entering into this new market, we really need to kind of, you know, find the right people who are going to help us get through this. Um, you know, for me, just the other day, you know, I was thanking Laura for being, you know, my shining light because I will admit I had my own fears about what's going on. And a lot of it has to do with what you see on the news. You know, I went to the supermarket the other day and everyone was freaking out and it was kind of hard for me not to freak out myself. So you know, limiting what we look at, news, you know, who we're speaking to. And we really need four important people to help us get through this. So financial, we need to cut our expenses. So whether you have an accountant or someone who can help you, someone who can help you do things in QuickBooks or whatever that might be, you know, right now is the time where you need to cut your budget. You know, we're going to have to live a different lifestyle, be a little bit more frugal. So who's going to help you with that? We're also gonna need someone to help us spiritually. And like I said before, Vlora is that person for me. So who is that person gonna be for you? Because things are gonna to get tough and scary and with everything in the media, it's just everything's negative. So who's gonna be there for you? Um, who's gonna help you stay positive and get through all the uh, negativity? You need someone physically. I mean, especially we're going through a health shift right? There is a virus going around. So we need to be careful. So who's going to hold us accountable, you know, physically? Um, gyms are closing, but yet we still need to, you know, take care of our bodies. Because if we don't, everything else is pretty much going to uh, fall apart. So who's holding you accountable in that aspect? You know, maybe do you have a personal trainer or a friend who can do training virtually, because that's the new world that we're living in right now. Everything's going to be virtual. And then business, right? So who's going to be holding you accountable uh, for your business in this new shifted market? And that is an opportunity that you're going to get uh, from this class. So I'm going to be later uh, picking someone who I'm going to be holding accountable business wise. So we're going to determine what you want to focus on and I'm going to hold you accountable, whoever that's going to be for 66 days. Um, for everyone else, you know, we can still hold each other accountable, all of us here as a group checking in on one another, but you truly need someone who's holding you accountable, making sure you're doing what you need to be doing before we talked about what we need to be tracking right? We need to track our numbers, the amount of leads we have, the amount of appointments we're going on, which is going to lead to the closings, and then the profit that we're going to be making. So who's going to be holding you accountable for that? So that's something that you need to think about. So I want you guys to take a second to really think about who can you reach out to? Who do you know um, that can help you with your financials, uh, spiritually, physically, um, and business-wise, who can help you right now that you can reach out to 
um, you know, it could be your database or your sphere. Um, and that's a way for you to connect because if you reach out to them for help, you know, when the time comes and when things settle or if they know people, you're also going to be that pinpoint person in terms of real estate of who they're going to reach out to. So, you know, just take a second to think about that. You know, who do you have in your circle who can help you with that? Now, we're going to talk about some tools. So we kind of start off talking about, you know, mindset, uh, what we do need to be accountable of, who can hold us accountable, but let's review some tools as well that we can use, especially within the next few weeks as we're, you know, doing things virtually, staying from home. This is the time right now to really get organized. Now, the tools I'm going to talk about, um, they're not going to be mind shattering. You may have heard them before, but I'm going to talk about them. If you've attended any of my previous classes, we have gone through this already, but I just wanted to add this and reinforce this into this particular class. So one thing we can do is doing the 411. So our team as a whole is actually going to start working on this, where we're going to create a 411 just on the systems that we want to implement um, in our team. So for those of you, if you need a refresher on what the 411 is, it is a tool that you can use to help you set your annual goals and then break them down monthly and then weekly. And those weekly goals, you know what you're supposed to do on a daily basis to help you. And right now, there's a lot of uncertainty. We might not even be able to set annual goals. We might have to change our annual goals. As Gary Keller said, you know, a lot of us, this might not be our best year. You know, things are going to be different, and that's okay. We have to make those adjustments, but make sure we do the daily activities. And if you've done a 411 before, you know, you might have said, I only need to go on two appointments every week. Well, you might need to change that now. And it might need to be four appointments a week. Or I, especially with things being done virtually now, it's probably going to be easier to do more appointments, right? Instead of traveling, going from one person's house to another, doing two listing appointments, you can easily bang out four listing appointments virtually now. So, you know, things might change and we need to shift our strategy, but I don't see how we cannot still accomplish this. Now, I'm going to pull up uh, a 411 visually because I feel like it's easier to see this way. Um, so like I said before, you have your annual goal on top. This might have to change. It might not. Um, if you still want to strive for the same goals that you had before, then you have your monthly goals and then your weekly goals, which are going to change. And you can use this for any aspect of your life. So before we were talking about who's holding you accountable financially, spiritually, physically in business. So you can do the same thing here. So for example, for our team, we're going to be implementing different systems. So one new system that we probably need to implement now is paid Facebook ad campaigns, or how do we hold listing appointments virtually? So we need to create these systems and implement them. So a lot of us, we have downtime. So what can you do weekly? How many hours can you dedicate each day, every week on implementing a new system? You know, a lot of us need to focus on cutting expenses out of our budget. So if you were using a different CRM before, how many hours each day, each week, can you dedicate to learning command and importing your entire database into command? Because command is free for us. So we need to cut back on whatever expenses we have before and go into command. So what can you do? What can you dedicate weekly? Um, and for whoever I end up working with, um, doing coaching, this is something that we can sit down together and do and figure out what are you going to do every single day for the next week? And what are you going to accomplish by the end of that month? So by the time this year ends, if we're still in this shifted market, you're still going to come out strong. So this is one tool that we can use, uh, you know, if you're sitting at home and, you know, you ran out of your snacks, this is the perfect thing to start working on is creating a 411. Now, the tricky part about working from home is sticking to a schedule. Uh, so it's very easy to relax on the couch and watch Netflix, but we need to treat our home as an office and as a job. So either you find a specific desk that you go to, you dress up, and you still work the same amount of hours. Working from home doesn't mean you can just sporadically work throughout the day. You still do specific hours. So if you used to lead generate, you know, from 
8 to 11, you still do that at the same time, fully dressed, but just in your house. So to be successful in this new quarantine lifestyle, we need to time block. So you're working from home, you're quarantined, still from 9 to 11 or 8 to 11, you are making your phone calls. And then from maybe 1, 2, 3 p.m., you are implementing uh, whatever systems that you want. So you're going to implement, um, you know, how you're going to use command. You're going to implement uh, how you're going to do things virtually. And then maybe from, you know, 5 to 7, you're doing virtual listing appointments. You know, and a lot of people are working from home. So you can probably virt do virtual appointments throughout the entire day. And you don't even have to leave your own house. But it's important to time block. You know, just because we're at home, we still need to be sticking to a schedule. So that's something that I think is going to help us keep accountable. The last tool that I want to do um, or discuss is the 66 day challenge. So if you're familiar with the one thing book, another uh, famous Keller Williams uh, book, they have a challenge in there and they studied that it takes 66 days to fully form a habit. And like I said before, we might be quarantined for another 66 days or more. So this is a perfect time uh, to build that new habit. And you can do it based on anything, whether it's spiritual, physical, financial, maybe every day you look for something new to cut out of your budget. Um, in terms of the coaching that I'm going to be providing to one of you, we're going to focus on business. So what can you do every single day for the next 66 days to help improve your business? Now, whether that be inputting leads into command or trying to figure out, you know, what kind of, if you want to do a new ad every day or monitor your ads every single day, um, will help determine that. But the th important thing about the 66 day challenge is it's just one small, tiny, little action that you do every day that eventually builds a really powerful habit. So one example that they use in the one thing book is, um, let's say you want to improve your physical health. Your 66 day challenge could be that by 5.30 PM, you're in your gym clothes. So it's not that every day you go to the gym, it's just that by 5.30, you're in your gym clothes. Now, if you're in your gym clothes by 5.30, you're more likely to go to the gym. But the important thing is just to start off small so you can build up those habits. Because you know if you just jump into it um, full force, you, know, you are gonna experience burnout. So what we're gonna work on together is just one small little item action that you can do every single day for 66 days. I'm literally going to call you FaceTime you every day for 66 days to make sure that you did that one thing you promised yourself. So that way at the end, you're gonna have a very strong habit. So for example, the physical health, you know, if you're in your gym clothes every day by 530, by the time, you know, you get to day 66, going to the gym is going to be second nature. And that's the, um, you know, power of this tool. So regardless if I'm going to be working on it with you or if you're going to do it on your own, uh, this is a tool that you can use, especially for the next few days since we're all working from home, you know, to really figure out um, what habit you want to form. And if you guys want a copy of that 66-day um, challenge calendar so you can cross it off, I can um, provide that for you as well. Okay. Now I'm just going to stop my share screen and re-enter. Hello, everyone. All right. So... What we've reviewed so far is pretty much a little bit about mindset, the shift that we are now entering, um, and just making sure that we have the right mindset and know that we can still be successful in this market. And we reviewed a little bit about what we need to be um, keeping track of. So the, the leads, the appointments, our budget, that's what we need to keep track of. And then just being aware if you're acting as a victim or if you're being accountable to yourself and then determining what action steps we're going to take. So if you have a fear, if you have a struggle you think you're going to face, what action steps are you going to take? We reviewed who's going to hold you accountable in your life. So I hope you guys do have someone and regardless whether or not I'm going to do one-on-one -on -one coaching with you, um, you know, you can still reach out to me. Uh, if you just want to discuss anything, anyone else in this group, all these people in here I know are the same and are willing to help each other. And then we also reviewed some tools that you guys can use. And like right now is the best time. I mean, how many times have they talked about the 411 in office meetings or in any other class that's offered, but we haven't done it? 
And this is the perfect time to really break down what do we need to do this week, each month. So by the time we get out of this shift, you're going to have, you're going to be bulletproof. You're going to have so many systems in place that it's going to be so much easier for you once we get out of this. Now, what I want to do right now is open it up back to everyone. And I want you guys to share some ahas with me. Um, what you guys feel, if you feel better, if you feel, you know, anything uh, differently about, you know, what we discussed and, you know, what your opinion is of this, of this shift. So I'm going to open it up to you guys. I'm waiting. If you're talking, just know that you have to unmute yourself. Can I go? Go ahead, John. <laughs> um, the biggest aha for me was the victim part. Um, you know, as some of you may or may not know, I was just in ICU again. Um, I was there last Thursday and I didn't get out till yesterday afternoon. And, you know, when you have health issues, it's very easy for you to fall into that victim mode. And what's most important is to stick to your schedule, like you were saying, or stick to whatever it is that your regimen is. So anyone that knows me knows what I do. I get up at 4 a.m. every day. I'm in the gym by 4.30. But, um, Clearly that got sidetracked when I'm in the hospital, but as soon as I felt healthy enough to get back to it, that's what I did this morning. And when you get back into that routine, I can attest to it that it, it will automatically re realign your mindset when you have those things in place where you've done them for so long that they come, they come organically to you and, and it's second nature. So I can't, I can't, for myself, implore you guys anymore to get up earlier and get some exercise going, get your mind and body going first thing in the morning, and then just having a real set schedule for the rest of the day as to what you're going to do, because that's what's going to sustain us in this market. And regardless of what business you have right now, if you continue doing the activities, it'll all come together. You, so, I mean, I, I, the biggest aha for me is just not falling victim to the victim mentality. Yeah. Yeah, especially because um, I know for you, you know, you do have previous health, you know, issues and you're definitely a person who is sensitive to what's going on right now. And I think you're a testament that, you know, you probably have more of a right to be a victim or scared out of all of us. And yet you're still out there connecting with people and moving forward um, and doing what you need to do and still going to the gym if you can, or doing other different, um, you know, I saw you posted on, Inst uh, on your Instagram story that you were doing your calisthenics outside, you know, so you're still doing what you need to do. And I think for all of us, you know, it's for us, that we can't be a victim of what's going on around us and to push forward. And it's been proven. Like, that's the only thing that's kind of keeping me afloat is that it's literally been proven that people have been successful in this shift. And any, that could be any one of us. It's really our decision if we want to be successful throughout this. So, you know, John, I thank you. You know, I'm always watching you and, you know, you're a good inspiration. And so, you know, we just have to really be accountable to ourselves and know that things are going to get harder. Um, but we have, you know, each other and, you know, you know, sometimes we have to really sit there and think, what's the worst that can truly happen? You know, things are going to get rocky. Things are going to get shaky. You know, we might not be as successful as we hoped for this year, but what's truly the worst, you know, that can happen to all of us. A lot of us are very fortunate, you know, and lucky and there's other people in other areas of the world who are not. So I think if we just keep things in perspective, this is the six personal perspectives class. So if we keep things in perspective, I think we'll understand, you know, that things are going to be okay, you know, and even though it feels like the end of the world, I don't think it's really going to be that.
So. I, I also think that during a time where everybody's being encouraged to be socially distant is a time for us as an office and just as friends and colleagues to become closer because we're going to need to lean on each other and motivate each other and encourage each other. I think that for the most part, of the majority of you can attest to it that anytime I see any of you do anything on social media, you know, I'm applauding it. I'm cheering for you guys. And um, I think that it, that that's very important that we lift each other up at during these times as well. Yeah, I agree. Well, so thank you for sharing, John. I appreciate that. Um, that is the end of this class. I really appreciate you guys taking the time, um, even though all we have right now is time. But you know, one of the six personal perspectives is being learning based. And you guys are all proving that that even in this time where there's a lot of uncertainty, you still prioritize learning and sticking through with these classes. And now's the best time because everything's easy. You don't even have to come to the office anymore. Um, I'm going to, I wrote down everyone who attended today's uh, Zoom class, so later I'll be announcing who is getting the accountability coach, so the 66-day challenge, uh, that's what I'll be working on with someone um, going throughout the entire 66 days, making sure that by the end you guys have that really strong habit, um, and again, we're here for each other. Um, I'm always, uh, well, all of us are around now virtually. Um, that's going to be easy for us to connect with. Um, unless if anyone has anything else to say, this class is over. Um, just be sure to keep yourself accountable. Find someone to hold you accountable. And just as John was saying before, you know, really avoid that victim mindset and understand that, you know, anyone can truly be successful. In this can I market. say something? Yep, Laura, First of all, amazing class as always. Uh, um, Teresa texted me. She wasn't able to, because of technical difficulties, add a comment she wanted to. So can I read it for you? Sure. Okay. Um, adding on to John Rios's point, this is from Teresa Belmore, by the way. We, mu we first must step out and be compassionate and empathetic human beings. This is a very challenging time for everyone. We should focus on every client, customer, investor, and potential leads needs first before we can begin to quantify what we can offer as realtors. First consult, see where they are in this challenging situation. Then begin to devise a solution individualized for each person. Some may just need a referral to a mortgage broker for refinancing. Some may just need a company who can sterilize their environment. Some may need to work through how uh, they're going to plan their current and future investment plans with their properties. Some may just need an ear. In my humble opinion, all this makes us a better consultant that pays off in spades for the future when this epidemic is over. Thanks for allowing my two cents worth, Teresa. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Teresa. I appreciate that. I didn't realize you were watching with us, but I see your phone number now. Um, thanks for tuning in. And thank you, uh, Laura, for sharing that with us. But yeah, be compassionate, understand whatever your thoughts are. Just know that... Um, be sensitive to what other people are thinking about um, in this current time. Certain people we are not going to be able to help right now, unfortunately. Um, but if we're there for them, they're going to remember us uh, when the time is right. And then the people who do need our help, um, those are the people we focus on. Okay. All right. If anyone else has... Liz, Liz thank, thanks. Awesome class. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming. This is fun. Um, I want to do this more for me, an introvert. This is way better than teaching a real class. So <laughs> I hope I, can, I, I have something to say. I have something to say. I have something All right, to say. All right, Jerome. Huge cheers for peers to you because even though I made a mistake with the calendar and put it on a week earlier, you wanted to champion and do it and said, screw it, I'll still hold it. And you were phenomenal. So I do appreciate that. You're really helping us keep our office engaged. So thank you for being so willing to do this, even with uh, less, less, one less week to prepare. Even I knew you were prepared already. Hmm. <laughs> All right. So thank you for that. Great job. All right. Thanks, everyone. All I'll see right, you guys yeah. out there in the virtual world. All right. Have, have a great day, everyone. All right. Bye-bye. Take care.